When you think of hatchbacks, what do you think of? Well, you think of this, the Volkswagen Golf. Over seven generations, Volkswagen has sold 35 million units of this Golf. And now we have a new one. This one comes with a host of new features, including one of my favorites, keyless entry. Welcome back to Ashley Come Out Reviews, and today we have the new Mark 8 Golf. Specifically, we have the new Golf Life Plus. So let's take a closer look. The new front end, it's undergone some transformation. Um, Volkswagen says this is a more digital looking car. What does that actually mean? Um, I think it means flatter surfaces, and I actually think the new car looks quite good. You have some nice new headlights. The logo is slightly different, it's a little bit flatter profile and generally it's a good looking car. You know, it looks like a Golf, which is great because Golfs look a particular way and they should remain that way. The colour, pomelo yellow, not my thing. Okay. Go for white, black, blue, but hey, if you like bright colours, pomelo yellow. The Volkswagen Golf is priced from $125,900 to $142,900 with Cat V COE. The 1.5-litre turbocharged engine produces 148 brake horsepower and 250 Nm of torque. The 7-speed transmission brings the car from 0 to 100 kmh in 8.5 seconds. For more details on the Volkswagen Golf or any other car, head on to sgkarma.com to help you make the smart choice on your next car. If we move on to the back of the car, the back of the car actually looks a little bit different. The main thing you'll notice is that the Golf word is now right smack in the middle and the font's actually different. Do I like this new look? Uh, I'm still taking some time to get used to it. I'm used to the sort of chunkier, bold font. But it looks good. Um, the rest of the car, you actually get new LED rear dynamic turn signal. So that's a cool, interesting function. And then that looks great. No complaints. Boot space. The boot's actually unchanged from before, 380 litres, so it's a usable, perfectly good size for everyday use. As far as our trolley tests, lengthwise, no go, but widthwise, yep, easy. And what about the big ass luggage? Again, no problems, it fits perfectly well. You can chuck this on top. And the boot was still close. Great. So let's check out the inside of the car. We're now in the back of the Golf, and I must say it's a nice, comfortable space. Uh, leg room, plenty. Headroom, plenty. Um, the car is not any more spacious or less spacious than before. The wheelbase is actually 1mm shorter, but yeah, that's 1mm. Doesn't make a real difference. As far as comfort wise, I do like the seats. Um, there is um, cushioning on either side that. Gives you a very snug uh, sitting position, which is good. As far as features, um, I do like these pockets, you know, com convenient for putting small things like your phone, your wallet. We have aircon controls, temperature. Two USB ports. We have isofix points on the two seats at the side. And center seat, we have cup holders. And actually, you can also quickly access the boot like that. Okay, a couple of things. I don't really like uh, the middle seat actually because the, of the way the seats are designed basically there's a, like a bump in the middle seat uh, both where you're sitting and your back as well so as a result you do end up sitting in a very upright position and it's not the most comfortable so I think for three people this maybe not the best because there's also transmission tunnel here which means you have to put your feet at the side for two people, it's perfectly comfortable, but I think for three, a mm, little bit of a squeeze probably. But other than that, you know, it's good size and perfectly usable every day. Uh, one other thing, I do like the new lights. It's a, like touch control. So that's cool. Um, okay, on to the front of the car. We're now here in the cabin of the new Golf. And it's here that you really see the changes and the new differences. So let's talk you through a few of them. 
First, the steering wheel. Steering wheel is new but familiar. Your controls are still thankfully easy to use and practical and just makes sense. And I think that's something important of a Volkswagen, which is that jump in and straight away everything is where you expect it to be. And this new one is pretty much functionally the same. This is the high life trim. So what you get, you get a 10.25 inch digital cockpit pro. It's a fully digital dashboard, which allows you to change different view modes. You can uh, toggle different kind of information. Here we have new light switches light switches so nothing special and then here we have the new infotainment system so this is the composition 8.25 inch one it's not the newer top of the line uh, discover pro so this one has uh, slightly fewer uh, features than your discover pro so the main thing that's actually missing from this is navigation but thankfully because you have smartphone connectivity with apple carplay and your Android Auto, you can just use your phone's um, maps and that basically is your navigation. What else? You get cool like background lighting things where you can change a whole bunch of different lighting colors. That's a fun feature. As far as the interface goes, it's a um, newer look, graphically more eye-catching. Do I like this new one? Uh, not yet. I think why is because it there's a new added level of complexity with this new system that I'm thinking sometimes you get used to. With Volkswagen, the thing that I always like is that you jump in and everything is very, very straightforward, very simple, easy to use. This one's a little bit more complicated. So what do I mean? For example, your climate control. So previously, you just have buttons where you can just press. Here now, you have one button that you need to hit for climate control. And then from here, you can adjust your temperature, your fan speed, your air care, your circulation, stuff like that. A little bit more complicated than it needs to be. But yeah, I mean, this is the new direction and it is what it is. As far as other controls, um, you have volume control here. That's about it, right? Okay, what other features? We have two USB-C ports. We have a wireless charging pad here. And yeah, this is new, this center console. So obviously the Gear shifter is gone now. You got this really tiny one. It looks a little bit funky, and at first it looks a little bit strange. But actually, after a while, I do actually like this new look. Why? It's because it's just it declutters the cabin, and it actually then makes the cabin feel a little bit bigger and a little bit airier in that sense. You know, you can swing your arm and you're not gonna hit anything, and it's just fewer controls. Every surface is just flat and sleek, and that's really nice. Um, what else is new? Oh yeah, this. The key. The key is new. I know key is not a big deal, but I do really like this new key. I like that it doesn't look like a typical uh, VW key and that's great. You know, it looks a bit more upmarket, a little bit more flashy and that's nice. Um, as far as materials go, we get this microfiber Alcantara, well, not real Alcantara, but Alcantara and fabric seats. They're actually quite nice to the touch and comfortable to sit in. As far as the whole cabin is concerned, yeah, the materials are not super um, high quality. You know, you have hard plastics, uh, fabric here, uh, fabric here as well. But overall, I actually think it's actually quite nice in the sense that it doesn't feel cheap. You know, everything feels well put together and just visually everything looks very clean. I, I, I like this metallic surface here. And overall, I think it's, it's a very nice uh, appealing cabin and I don't really have too many complaints as far as being in here um, yeah the system is a little bit of a hassle to, to deal with but I think over time you get used to it and yeah that's about it so let's go drive this car and see how it feels on the road so we are now out on the road in the new Golf and I must say, I'm really enjoying the drive so far. It's smooth, it's comfortable, music's off, aircon's at a low setting, so there's not a lot of cabin noise right now and it's, you know, very quiet, nice and nice and quiet. Insulation is pretty good, you know, it's not a lot of road noise, not a lot of tyre noise, not a lot of wind noise, so it's generally a very comfortable place to be in while you're driving. And as far as how it feels on the road, I like it, it's comfortable. 
Um, the suspension isn't too soft, so the car's not bobbing up and down, it's not rolling a lot when you're, when you're going through like um, corners and stuff. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's not too stiff as well, so it does a good job of still soaking up uh, bumps on the road. You know, go over big bumps, it doesn't, doesn't jump or, or anything, you know, it's, it's nice and smooth. And because of that, I think the driving experience is very, very comfortable, very easy, very, very sensible. As far as performance goes, this car has 148 horse, 215 newton meters of torque, which is not crazy a lot, crazy amounts of power, right? It's it's pretty sort of usable everyday power, you know. It's it's as much power as you and I really need on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, just for heading to work, you know, heading home. We're doing 80 on the highway and you know just a little bit of throttle, the car picks up well, overtaking is done fairly easily, so you, no real complaints about the performance. Um, the big thing with this new Golf is that it's now a mild hybrid. So under the bonnet, we have a 1.5 litre mild hybrid engine. This obviously comes with some, some benefits. Um, so the car is actually able to shut off two of its four cylinders um, when, when you're driving efficiently. And obviously this helps you to save petrol. But more importantly, um, the mild hybrid system also actually allows the car to actually completely shut off the engine while you're coasting. Now we're rolling along at 70 kilometers per hour the, the engine actually shuts off completely and you can the car will just roll and then when you get on the brakes or you get on the throttle again it actually does a very smooth job of just kick starting the engine again you don't really feel it at all and, and that's that's something that I've come to be quite impressed with with this particular mild hybrid system it's very seamless very smooth and you don't really feel it working which I suppose is the best sort of um, integrated mild hybrid system, right? And as far as efficiency goes, okay, so Volkswagen claims this car is 10% more efficient than the comparable 1.5 TSI engine. I cannot verify that for, for certain, and that's because Volkswagen never actually brought in a Golf with the 1.5. The 7.5 7 Golf um, came with a 1.4 and then a 1.0 liter engine. So I don't know, but as far as what I'm doing, I'm doing about 16 kilometers per liter after driving this car for about two days. And that's, I think, honestly, is quite impressive. It's still some ways off Volkswagen's claim 20 point, I think 20.8 kilometers per liter. But obviously that's very optimistic. You can drive this car on a highway for maybe 200 km. And yeah, I think maybe that figure is achievable, but realistically, real world driving, 15, 16, I think it's solid, you know, no complaints. So overall, I, I do like how this Golf feels on the road. It's nothing, nothing spectacular, but at the same time, it's, it's very solid, very comfortable, very usable. And I think that's the most important thing, right? With a car like this, an everyday hatchback that's supposed to you know, take a family, you know, stuff in a boot, you want it to be just easy to use, accessible, comfortable, and, and it is. It's, I have no complaints. I mean, driving this car for two days, no complaints about how it drives. So yeah. It's, it's a nice car to drive. So, the new Golf. Is it a will buy, won't buy, or go try? I think it's a will buy. Um, Price-wise, this one is, this is the mid-spec version. It's about 132, which is admittedly not, doesn't seem very cheap. But you do have to factor in, factor in the fact that Cat V COE now is pretty expensive. And yes, this is a Cat B car. You know, Golf used to be Cat A, but with this new engine, the new output is a Cat B car. So that's yeah, bumping the price up a little bit. But I still think it's a it's a car that's very worth buying. You know, you get a good amount of car for your money. You get very solid engineering. It's very usable day to day, and you're not really going to have any issues with using this car. You know, there, there are no real significant compromises so i think you, you're getting pretty good return for your money and let's be honest at the end of the day when it comes to hatchbacks the golf is still the quintessential hatchback and i think that hasn't changed at all it is still the hatchback that does everything well you know maybe not anything spectacular but everything well and you know it's that that sort of sort of complete sensible package that that really comes to define a car like this, right? I mean, that's why it's such a popular car, a car that's sold, you know, millions and millions. So yeah, I think, I think this is a car that definitely is worth buying. 
So, there you have it. Eight generations on, the Golf is still the quintessential hatchback. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section below whether this is a will buy, won't buy, or go try. Please also like and subscribe to see more of our videos, and do also follow us on TikTok at SGKama. In the meantime, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.